strive for greatness is extremely an unnatural endeavor and it's very unhealthy. A lot of these great athletes, these superstars that we look up to, they have a lot of mental issues. They're mentally very sick, but they're the best at their craft. And so they juggle those two things and they balance them. And so the people that never learn how to juggle those elements never break free from that sort of centralized normal state. As humans, let's be honest, what are we born naturally to do? Survive. Lay, survive. So lay around in the sun, can make some art, procreate, maybe migrate a couple kilometers a day, search for a little bit of grub, go to sleep, rinse and repeat, right? So all success is unnatural. Extremely unnatural. And that's why everybody loves the underdog story of the guy who comes from nothing and becomes something because everybody knows what that takes. Everyone knows that means that you're breaking outside the confines and the rules of the game. Nature has preset the game to make it very difficult to succeed. It's very difficult, right? You have to bear an, an enormous burden to be at the to be at the top of the of, like when you are number one, there is a bullseye on your head, and I truly believe that's why you see a lot of these like MMA guys, John Jones. Who stands in the way of John Jones? John Jones. Yeah. He's the only the only guy who can stand in the way of a guy like that is himself, right? So my point is, it, there's a lot of pressure that mounts on you when you're at the top, and everyone's gunning for that position. Everyone wants that championship belt. And I think a lot of these guys, they get tired of having all that pressure on their shoulders and they end up succumbing and intentionally sabotaging and going back down the ladder where they can just get a little bit of peace at night. Because it's, it's tough being number one. Everyone's gunning for you, right? Look at the streaming game. We had this conversation yesterday, right? If you're the number one streamer in the world, there's a thousand guys behind you gunning for your position. So the minute you get caught slipping, <laughs> Snakes and ladders. That game shoots and ladders you played as a kid, yeah. it's a metaphor for life. That's exactly how life works. So your, your biggest obstacle when you find success is yourself. 100%. I think John Jones talked about that. Like when one of his, his title defense fights, he was having this nightmare of lose, getting knocked out in the first round. And he kept having these, these dreams over and over again. In the dream, he was always standing when he got knocked out. So be, the feather man was like, was started off crawling. And it seemed like that obstacle of his own dream was was a bigger threat than, I don't even remember who the opponent was. Exactly. But I remember the dream. Exactly. So the, the whole the whole adage like you are your own worst enemy, that's 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 factually true. Especially when you get to when you get to the top. How do you how do you Like look too, here's what's interesting, right? Have you noticed any top fighter or or who's taken remember Ronda Rousey? Yeah. She was the best jujitsu fighter. She was she was a cage fighter. Yeah. She was undefeated. The minute, the first fight she lost, she never ever recaptured or reclaimed that magic touch. Mm -hmm. Wiped out. And that happens to a lot of the best, like Jose Aldo. A lot of the best fighters, once they get that first knockout, they never recover that self-image. They're never the same. It permanently, permanently like reduces them from the, from the throne. Do you think it's their aura and public perception or is it something internal? 100%, everyone's living up to public perception. And that's, that's the difficult part to manage. That's the heart. That's the that is the game right there is managing the public perception because everyone's got you on that pedestal. But then you have to live up to the, the persona that you're projecting out there. Can, can McGregor ever recover? No, no After chance. Khabib? No chance because he got paid. That's the other thing, too. It's like once you get the bag at that level, there's something weird in human nature where your motivation just gets clapped. Done. There's zero f spark or fire to ever do that again. It's like the, the one hit wonder thing, right? In music, like guys drop a f platinum album and it's very few have been able to keep that streak going. The Drakes, the Dre's, all those guys. Like that's, 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 those are outliers. But it depends on what is, you're chasing success for. Khabib said in that press conference against McGregor, he said, I, I'm doing this for legacy. You're doing this for money. Exactly, exactly, 100%. But that's, that's a cultural thing. So like his upbringing, you know, the was like fighting bears in caves and shit. Yeah. Like his, he's doing it for honor, ancestral honor. Whereas the American way, you know what I mean? The bling, the mansions, the, the it's, it's a more, much more capitalistic thing. Irish is very similar. To very that. similar. Yeah. Very similar. Well, you also said that the, f the first way to become successful in America is to be loud and boisterous first. You have to make a lot of noise and then the success comes. Like you can't find wealth without being loud first 100 percent. if you're shy in america you're royally f***ed. royally f***ed. if you're shy in this land this is the land of fanaticism right like what the pioneers that came here 
the, it was the fanatics and the artists and the dreamers who had the balls to, to make the voyage here to, to find the new world, right? That spirit has never left. So the guys who will not put themselves out there get devoured by the guys who are making the most noise. You know what I mean? It's sort of an inverted process. Everyone likes to say that the, it's, it's all bark, no bite, but the bark is what puts you on the map. In, in, a lot, in a lot of ways. Do you think that's, you can just keep the camera steady. Do you think that's why Elon Musk started becoming loud and embracing that fanaticism? 100%, he calls the shots. That's what the best do. The best call their shots publicly. They like being behind the eight ball, right? He's behind the eight ball. He's got himself kind of in a corner now and then he likes to dig himself out and prove everybody right. A lot of people do, use this tactic. You know, there's, there's a common thing on Twitter in our corner People will say, keep your goals to yourself. Don't ever discuss your goals publicly because you get a dopamine hit from it and right. then you're, you're less likely to achieve them. People say they're gonna go to the gym and then don't. Exactly, I think it's the opposite. I okay. think if you make yourself accountable publicly, yeah. then you- You're forced, you add pressure. 100%. And the ones that rise to the pressure are the ones who get everything. So why do a lot of people declare their goals and never do anything about them? I know so many people, like. Recently, I got this guy a computer because he says, like, oh, I'm going to start live streaming. I texted him yesterday, like, did you get the computer? He's like, no. Like, it's still, like, I, I gave him crypto. He's like, it's just sitting in the, the coin. But he said, like, he kept talking about how he wants to do this. It's been years. And I'm like, I just tried to give him that, that extra push. And he's just letting it sit. You know, he's not really doing it. Why? What separates the people? Because I, I was like that. You know, I always publicly declared videos when I was like 14, 15, saying like what I wanted to do, what I wanted to be. And that added a mental pressure that I needed because my upbringing wasn't that difficult. But adding public pressure has been that way that I got out of the comfort zone. Why do so many people not get out of the comfort zone? I think it's a self-image thing. So like one of my favorite tweets that I ever put out there is I said that you can never outperform your self-image. Which means if you internally believe you're a piece of shit deep down, it doesn't matter how much money or how much success you come into, you will purposely find a way to go back down to the level that you truly believe you are here. You can literally try to out billionaire it. You could try to out, you could try to get a hundred girlfriends, hundred wives. You could buy all the mansions in the world. You will find a creative way to become who you really think you are inside. So you think it's important to view yourself as a piece of shit? No, I think it's important to view yourself as the opposite. You have to build that worthiness by putting yourself how do you, out there. How do you build that without starting at zero? So what I think it is, and it goes back to my tagline. I, the tagline on my Twitter before the one now, Benjamin Franklin Disrespector, Disrespect, yeah. was transcendence through intensity. I remember, yeah. Yeah, and that was my favorite one because I, got, I, I came up with that idea when I saw the movie The Revenant. I don't know if you've seen that movie. Yeah, with, Wrestling the Bears with yes. DiCaprio. Yes, so that movie is incredible because it's about, it's about the human spirit. That guy literally does not break. He gets mauled by a bear. He's crippled, he's broken. He's in the middle of the forest by himself and it's a, it's a survival story. The guy's clinging on for life, but he has no external assistance. He has no crutches, figuratively and literally, right? It's just him and his human spirit and his willpower willing him forward. Now, in the modern world, and your computer example is a great example of this, everyone thinks you have to have the best equipment before you start the game, yeah. right? It's always the guy in the gym who comes to me and is like, how do I get strong? The first thing they'll do, and this is a, this is a stall tactic, because they don't actually want to get in there and do the work. Mm -hmm. They'll be like, what, 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 uh, what, do I get Nike or Adidas uh, fucking lifting shoes? Yeah. What kind of belt do I get? And I'm like, bro, you're already so fucked because you're going in there with the mindset that the equipment makes the man. And it's not the equipment that makes the man. Every journey, right, starts with nothing. Low tech. You just go in there and you put in the work. So it's like... Like Brazilian soccer players, they start playing on the road with the In the, the rocks. favelas, exactly. And then when they get on a turf field, they're like, look how much easier they're it is. They're kicking stones around yep. in place of a soccer ball, right? So, um, and that, I've, I've been a testament to that. I used to go in there and train and everybody would tell me, and I was putting up elite numbers, objectively elite Olympic lifting numbers nationally in the country. I was like top 0.01%. And when I would go in there, all the coaches would always be like, you're not using the right gear, you're not using the right equipment, but I'm outlifting everybody. I'm putting up more numbers than your guys. So how the fuck can you tell me what to do? You know what I'm saying? And so 
you want to talk about capitalism and marketing has infected people's minds in this. It's the whole Air Jordan thing, right? Guys literally were psyoped in the 90s thinking that if you bought a pair of Jordans, you were going to play like Mike. You could start hooping. You could start hooping. And it was never about the shoes. It's not about the belt. It's not about the fucking kicks. It's, none of that matters. It's not about the computer. You could have given that motherfucker a tablet and you would have figured it out, right? Mm. If you really wanted it. So everyone thinks you got to get the best equipment, best camera to be a photographer. It's like, no, dude, you could literally start with a fucking Crazer from 1993, that blurry ass camera and just start snapping pics. Yeah, I always remember Mr. Beast telling me that he got to 100,000 subscribers using his iPhone. Exactly. Like an iPhone 5. Exactly. I, it's because these people don't want to start. They just want to find every excuse to stall. And I, your philosophy is that the ideal IQ is like 80 or like 85 as a man, where you don't have to, where overthinking is like some of the biggest problems that people have. Did you notice that like going into powerlifting competitions where like if people are too living too existing too internally and thinking introspectively, they are hindering their performance because yeah, you psych not... yourself out. You psych yourself out, you fake yourself out. So if you if you are at that point right now, say you're somebody who thinks very introspectively, you're like you're an overthinker, how do you turn that voice off so that you can just live in first person mode like a caveman? You How do you dial back your IQ so that your performance is better? You gotta take risk. You gotta actually have skin invested in, in a project. Doesn't have to be betting, gambling, those, that's just a metaphor. Anything, you have to put your heart on the line for something and fail for real. How do you- Bro, failure is, I have failed more than anybody that I know by a long stretch. I have fucked up royally catastrophically so many fucking times in my life M literally more than everybody that i personally know combined catastrophic failure over and over and over again but my wins and my highs that i get are unlike anybody that i know as well so when i do actually get a breakthrough my breakthroughs are absurd i'm flying through fucking barriers when i get my breakthroughs because i'm relentless so like i'll commit myself to a process and I'll get my ass kicked, and I'm just right back on the saddle the next day. Bring, like, bring it on. Give me more. Uh, most people go insane like that, insane. having those highs and lows. Insane. How do you, how do you maintain? Well, bro, that's the secret: is you have to be slightly fucking insane to make it in this life. You have to. You have to have a slight degree of craziness, right? The mad, the mad genius. But that's the whole thing. It's all branding, right? Because the 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 maniac who successfully pulls it off and on the hundredth swing finally hits the grand slam and wins the game, everyone calls him a genius. But the guy who fails a hundred times and never gets the W, he's seen as, fuck, as, as, as crazy, as eccentric, right? It's all branding. So you, by winning, you are able to sort of rebrand these personal personality traits where people are, are widely accepting of them. It's all, about, it's all about the win, man. Like you have to win in the end, have to. Uh, good transition. You, you said winners are always having fun exclusively as a rule. What they find fun, the average person does not. They can be entangled in the most disparaging horror show circus of a situation and find enjoyment in it. They see everything as a game and all games winnable. I, I think you're right completely. If you look at like how competitive Michael Jordan, uh, Conor McGregor, all these people are, like they'll take a ping pong game and then put their whole ego and reputation on the line. Yep. Do you think they, they see everything? Do you even think they see family, having kids, stuff like that? Do they see everything as a, as a game? 100%, 100%. Like they'll be, they'll be embroiled in a very, very classically what you would call like sick situation. Like they could be in a very explosive fight with their woman or going through a yeah. horrible fucking breakup or whatever but they find some like sick enjoyment in the process of just like sitting in it and basking in it and, and like they learn they, they're, they're fucking avid learners bro they're learning from everything it's like the, their misfortune they almost get like a, a kind of a kick out of it yeah because it's like how can i disentangle myself from this mess that i created and that's that's really what the winning mentality is it's about because as you're taking risks and as you're ascending the ladder, you're going to find yourself in messes, right? Do you think that's what the insanity is? Because you, you nailed that. When I've had really difficult situations in life, there was always like a little like voice in my head that was enjoying the moment, enjoying exactly. like dropping out of school and not knowing what to do. Exactly. Or, you know, like even like small things like fights with my girlfriend, stuff like that. 
I'm thinking like this is just this shitty situation is like how am I going to get out of this? I, I kind of enjoy the process. And I don't, I don't think a lot of people think that way, and I've been I've never voiced that or. Uh, communicated that with other people, but there was always some sort of satisfaction. There's a satisfaction in anything that you're in because you're just, you always find an angle. There's, because, dude, that's the crazy thing about being a man. There's always a way out. There's just always a, there's always, as long as you're living and breathing, there's always something you can do to, 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 to twist and fucking wiggle yourself through something. There's always a way to get out on the other side. Mm -hmm. That's the incredible part about life. But most people will never try or put themselves in a contorted position where they even have to figure that the fuck out. You know what I mean? Like I, I've lost millions of dollars gambling and had nothing and had to rebuild from literally fucking zero. And there, then even when you're at that point, you still kind of had that like sick, like how am I going to get back to the 100%. Topic? Bro, there were nights where I'm eating a $2,000 dinner, king crab fucking legs, A4 Wagyu, sleeping in a penthouse. The next day, I'm so broke, I'm hitting up motherfuckers to go sleep on their couch. The, the disparity, like on top of the world one night and the next morning I am in the bottom of the gutter in 24 hours. And I always found a way to get back into the suite. That's my point. Because you can almost take any risk in life if you're willing to commit. It's all about the commitment. And I'm just not a quitter, it's not in my nature. I don't give up on people. I don't give up on anything that I, and, and that's the thing, man, is like, I am, I take everything very seriously, but I've noticed the people that take things so seriously also have the most lightheartedness and can laugh the most when things go wrong. You know what, like you almost have to have that dark humor that you're talking about. You almost have to have that kind of dark comedic humor when everything's going wrong, you just, you just have to laugh sometimes. Yeah. You have to. It's like the only way to cope with it. Yeah, I, I was telling him uh, last time I went to Arizona, I did a cross um, cross country road trip, and on the way back to back to New York, I was in Colorado. My car broke down. It was like pouring snow. I didn't know where I was gonna stay that night. Police were there. I didn't have enough money for the tow truck. Yeah. I remember like sitting in the, the um, in the car with my brother, and like they're, they're towing the car. There's snow pouring everywhere. I'm in the middle of the country, like and I'm broke, not in school. I remember laughing. <laughs> and, like, I was just like, this is this is fucked, but. That laughter, I've never realized that like that laughter is is part of you is understanding that you're good, that you're gonna find a way out of it. Always, always. I've never. The thing is, you only rise to the level of the problems that you have, right? And so most people, the biggest problem they'll ever have is being twelve hundred dollars late on rent. Right. That's the biggest problem they have. But to them, that is the world. And to them, when they when they're late on their rent payment they feel like the world is crumbling on their shoulders. But they don't understand there's men out there that are built of the same constitution they are, same blood, same structure, that before they've even woken up in the morning, they're going through a fiery divorce. Their empires, their businesses are exploding, collapsing. They're being sued. They're going through bankruptcy. Their cars are being repoed. And those guys are laughing, knowing that it's gonna be okay and they're gonna get it all back. Right. And it's like, you got another here that's tripping because he can't pay his Prius. There's, there's levels to all of it. There's dudes that are dealing with demons and monsters that are so outrageously incomprehensible for the average person and they're successfully dealing with it on a daily basis. Those are the guys that win because they put more on their plate and when you put more on your plate and you have more pressure, you're always gonna respond to the, to the pressure. So if you don't have enough pressure, men do not do jack shit unless they have to. That's what I've noticed. Unless they actually fucking have to, they don't know who they are yet, right? And that's what the problem with the modern man is, is like- They have no pressure. They have no zero pressure to do anything. Mm -hmm. Survival's easy, we, we've hacked the matrix. It's, it, life's easy, man. It's, life is abundant in 2024. You can blindfolded do a half-assed job at any gig and pay your rent. Let's okay. be honest. Food is dirt cheap, clothes are cheap. You're not gonna die in the modern world. You're never gonna starve. Never, you'll figure that out. You'll figure it out mm. for sure. And you'll figure out a roof too. If, if you, so like people don't take these risks and try to progress because they convince themselves, what if I die? What if my survival is in jeopardy? That's never the problem. It's about you are afraid to become a different person and go through the transformation of going through that process. Cause you might come out of that process and not recognize who you were when you started. Mm. And that terrifies people. 
I'm a completely different guy than I was when I was a kid. I'm living proof, I'm a testament that the way you're born and your genetic cards that you're dealt are completely malleable and can be transcended. They can be. Steve Jobs has a quote where he said, the way he views the world is it's like, when he pokes at something, there's a ripple effect. He, he describes it really plainly, like if you, the, the way you are as a man, I, I think it's, it's just life as a man. You can affect the world if you actually, impl- if you, you can change the universe that's around you. Exactly. And a, a lot of people don't understand that like very simple concept. Like the same way that you can affect the world in Minecraft, mm-hmm. like you can make buildings and you can change the whole, you can change the weather and the, you have that power. Every man, every individual man has that power to make a ripple effect on the, on the entire universe. 100%. And the only thing that separates the, the innovators from the people that, you know, die and no one remembers them, the only difference is that commitment you're saying, that self-belief. That's it. That's literally it. That's, it goes back to the Revenant story. It's about that spiritual, it's a spiritual, these are spiritual principles. This is like a level of spirituality that you actually have to ingrain in yourself. Because the human spirit, bro, will take you to the most incredible heights in life. It's all about your heart. Everything's about the, the male heart. The, the heart is the most masculine organ in the, in the body. Everyone thinks it's the head. Women live in their head. Women are the ones with the crazy racing thoughts all the time and hyperanalyze shit and freak out and panic. Men live from their heart and their soul because that's the shit that you're born with. Whatever's in your heart as a man, you're born with that. And nobody can take that away from you. Your desires, your impulses, your dreams, your visions, the things that you like, the things that you have a natural affinity towards, you're born with that. And so no one can rip that out of you. But the head, the head shit, the guys that live in their head, they can't access this. And that's the problem. That's why they convince themselves they can never get started on a project or an endeavor. So it's just the number one problem I see with every single guy. Number one it's, problem. It's frustrating to see that. But how do, you, how do you connect more with your heart as a man? How do you get out of your head and live more first person mode, like a caveman acting from your heart's desires? So one trick, one trick to go unconscious and put the like conscious mind to sleep is volume like heavy volume like if you're a guy who doesn't get women you're talking to so many women that eventually the fucking beast inside you just starts doing the talking like you're no longer worrying about cues and what to say and flinching and all that shit you're literally you are you have so many shots out there that one of them's gonna land Uh, just like writing you write so much until your hand falls off that you break the rust in the process and you get the breakthrough you stop thinking about it. You're just writing and writing and writing until your fucking hand basically has arthritis. And then you're fucking, you hit the ground running and you get the breakthrough and it's over. I, I like this one too. You said, I said weeks ago, if you fall through the trap door of depression, a whole new world opens up to you. A little more pain here, a little more sprinkled there. And now you're back on your feet laughing. It's stagnation at depression that kills you. Keep falling. And I, I, I remember when I, when I was stagnant for a long time, so I've been doing YouTube like content creation for like 11 years, like the main thing I do. And I hit a um, stagnation point for about three years where I was only posting like every up, a couple months and I wasn't actively pursuing it, but I knew that it was always like the dream that I had like at the back of my head and I wasn't pursuing it. And it was only like at my lowest point that I decided the next day to get back on it. And then I haven't stopped since then. And that was like maybe like six years ago. It was at like the lowest point, you know, staring at the wall, freaking out, mental breakdown. How do you pivot that depression to someplace positive? Because most people get to that point, you know, a lot of people can end up in a mental hospital. A lot of people will end up quitting. A lot of people will stay with their mom's house forever. How do you use that depression and that breaking point to your advantage? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's like you, stagnation is ultimately what fucks everybody. It's the stagnation. It's like staying in an emotional state for too long is very dangerous for all men. Any kind of emotional state that you're lingering in and not moving out of becomes dangerous after a while. Um, there's, a good, there's, there's good data and literature on the fact that in war, in times of war, suicide rates plummet harder than they ever do before. B- basically, nobody commits suicide when there's a war and you got to defend territory in a nation. And it's like, you start to think about that and you're like, okay, it makes sense. As soon as a motherfucker has a mission, mm. you, you fly right out of that depression, right? So 
the people who end up killing themselves and end up having suicidal tendencies and thoughts and really, really going into a dark place. They have no mission. They have no mission, but they also don't realize that they need to keep moving and keep failing even because going down, going down and losing more and going even lower is better, better than staying in that place because you have movement. So movement either way is always better than stagnation because there's a wraparound effect. If you go too low, you'll end up wrapping around towards the top and horseshoeing back into abundant mentality. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, have you ever been so on such a losing streak in your life? Nothing's clicking, nothing's Mm -hmm. sticking. You're just, you fuck up after fuck up after fuck up. After a while, you get so fed up that you immediately, your mindset just automatically changes into absolute abundance. You stop giving a and you start taking shots and then things start working again and you're back on your feet. That's how that phenomenon works. And the reason why it worked is because you kept going lower and lower and lower and lower until you rebounded. So you never want to sit with the feelings or sit with the failure, sit with the loss. You got to put up the next shot very quickly. So it seems like the common denominator is perseverance. 100%. 100%. And that's why IQ, I think, is malleable. IQ is not a finite thing. People talk about intelligence. I mean, look, I think grit and, and tenacity and guile and what you just said, resilience, is a part of IQ. It's a huge factor in it that's not quantifiable. Because if you get a guy like that on a battlefield or in a project or in a fucking business room, oh, yeah. he's going to look and smart at some point. Okay, here's one. Uh, um, I'm curious to see how you explain. You said, never consciously learned a skill in my life. Anything extremely difficult I've ever done was just biting off way more than I could chew and fingering it out on the go. Common denominator was always fun. Fun is the only true compass for acquiring anything worthwhile. That, I, I also agree with that completely. Like, I, I've often felt the pressure, like people are like, what skills do you have? And I think back, like, I'm wildly successful, but I don't think I've like completely nailed or like mastered anything you know everything that i've done that i've been successful at it's because i found a level of enjoyment in it and if i don't enjoy doing it i'm not going to do it same like, here one thing that i got really good at uh that some people might say i've mastered like something like editing videos and i only came, became really good at that because i was i you reach a flow state where, it, where it's not work and it's not you mastering a skill it's not you you know studying for an exam you're just doing it because it's something that you're passionate about and you've reached a point where it just it naturally starts like a like Beethoven playing the keys on a piano, exactly. it just starts like flowing out of you. Uh, how do you how do you find that? Because a lot of people feel the pressure that they need to perform, that they have to work. Yeah, everybody's been taught that you have to go against the grain, and that's the opposite of leaning into your nature, which is like my philosophy. My whole core philosophy is leaning into your nature as a man. Whatever the fuck you are naturally engineered and designed to do is what you should be leaning into, and. For example, like my speaking on my spaces that I host, it's, it's people will be like, how do I speak like you? How do I become a better speaker? I'm like, bro, get different parents. It's fucking genetic. Like I'm just running with whatever the fuck I got. And I'm, if you, if you go all in on your strengths, by the way, it will eventually eclipse all your weaknesses and you never have to work. Like people are always like, yeah, but why don't you focus on your weaknesses so you can be well-rounded? It's like the goal is not to be well-rounded because what is that's the literal term well-rounded means you have no edge right Mm -hmm. it's all about keeping your edge as a man Mm -hmm. so i never dealt with weaknesses i would always let them fall to the wayside and if you just get good at one thing and you crush it no one gives a fuck about your weaknesses because you're so fucking good at one thing and so that's i've always just run with what i've naturally been geared at which is speaking writing never fucking took a writing class in my life Never fucking popped a thesaurus, never opened a dictionary. I just have fucking strong reading comprehension, so I ran with it. So everybody knows what's, what, what they have inside. Everyone knows what they're good at naturally. But everyone wants to resist it and get into other shit that they're not that good. It's like, why the f*** did I compete at something that's going to take me 10 years to get just as good as the guy who's born with the gift? I'm not going to burn 10 years of my life trying to be a piano player when another, there's a who has that natural talent who's going to fucking run with it and be 100 times better than me. Mm-hmm. I want to be the best at whatever it is that I do. And I don't care if I fall short. My goal is to be the best. How do you personally reach that flow state? I know a lot of people 
have different ways of getting there. I don't even know how to like describe mine um, thinking about it now. But how do you get to that point where your work and what you're good at doesn't feel like work and it just it's something that's fun? So that's the thing is like I, that's what I was saying is the fun is the compass. The fun is the North Star. Like if I genuinely don't enjoy it, I don't care if I'm going to lose money over it. I'm not going to fucking do it. And like it goes back to my whole thing about you have to find the lifestyle before you find the money. And this is where people get it really fucked up and twisted. People okay. go for the money, try to get rich first at like 21 years old. Now they have a bunch of money, but they don't have the lifestyle. So they don't know how to fit in the lifestyle and they start doing dorky, quirky shit that doesn't fit and it's super incongruent. I was living how I wanted to live when I was broke. Yeah, me too. I was still doing whatever the fuck I wanted to do when I had nothing. So you put money on top of that, you're a powerhouse. You're a force to be reckoned with because you already had the lifestyle. So it's like guys have to figure out what they naturally want to do already and find a way to incorporate money into it, not the other way around. Play to your strengths. Play to your fucking strengths all the yeah. time. Let the weaknesses fall away because if you get so good at it, it'll overshadow all the weaknesses. You said uh, if you ever take a swing at an opportunity and feel like you have to nail it first try, you don't really want it. You convince yourself you do. When you really want something, your whole engine will calibrate for it. You have an infinity clip. You are careless because you know it's already yours. Um, That's one of my favorites. Yeah, can, 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 you, can you explain that one? Yeah, so what I'm saying is, is, it's like if you already know that you got it and you already know you're destined to be what you're supposed to be because your nature is that strong, you can fail a billion fucking times and it ain't no thing. It just rolls off your shoulders because you already know you're gonna get there. So you're not taking it too personally when things don't work out. You don't have to land your dream girl the first time because you already know that's coming. You don't have to get secure the bag the first try. You don't have to knock it out of the park the first investment that you make because you know you're gonna get it eventually. So you can have fun with the process and enjoy going through the motions. So you have the infinity clip. You can just keep putting up shots until the end of time. It's like there's some guys who they go to a bar and they talk to a girl and they get rejected. It destroys them for two months. Mm -hmm. And there's other guys who just immediately start talking to other women. And those are the guys that I told you have the wraparound effect and end up rebounding into the abundance mentality. Yeah. Because they don't internalize it. They don't internalize it. That's been my biggest strength, I think, is I don't internalize anything. I don't take anything personal. I know I get a redo. You get a mulligan as a guy. You wake up the next morning, you draw another breath, you're in the game. Right? You're always in the game. How do you, how do you teach people to, how does someone who's not thinking that way, how do they start thinking that way? So I think the confidence really comes from standing on your own two feet first. I think that's where a lot of people go wrong is like as a man as early as possible you have to prove to yourself that you can support yourself and make a living and feed yourself and fend for yourself in the wild without relying on your parents and in the modern culture brother we we see fucking there's guys that are living at home at 38 telling themselves that in three years when the timing's right and during the crypto bull run yeah. they're gonna move out and they never do yeah. they're still there because you have to be disgusted with yourself to make changes mm -hmm. and that's that's like a very taboo topic but nobody no man ever makes a change until they can barely look in the mirror they're so fucking sick and tired of being sick and tired until you're until you get 200 pounds and you're obese and you're looking in the mirror and you are absolutely disgusted with the state of being that you've allowed yourself to get to it's only use, uh, using that disgusted state that catapults you to really make big changes, right? It's like a lot of people try to make changes for other people. You got people that are overweight, maybe they wanna lose weight, but other people are in their ear telling them to lose the weight and they start doing it for other people to make them happy and they never, the weight never goes anywhere. Right. Because they ain't doing it for the right reason. Yeah, I know fat people, they get told by their friend group all the time, Oh, you're a fat piece of shit. You're a fat piece of shit. They laugh it off, and then it becomes it like it becomes a joke because they're not actually disgusted with themselves. Exactly. It has to be internal. It's the only way to make true change is to get to a point of absolute disgust where you cannot imagine living yeah. another day yeah. in these conditions. That's exactly what happened to me. That's what happened to me too. 
Do you remember that day? How'd it happen for you? Yeah, I do. And I'll tell you the story after yours. Um, well, I don't recommend anybody take drugs, but when I was in high school and college, I used to take psychedelics. And if you're not in the right mental state, if there's anything that's, I, that's what I realized like taking LSD, it was like, or shrooms. If there's anything that I was like pushing away or trying to ignore, it becomes fully present when you're in that psychedelic state. And after like not, after procrastinating and I was just drinking every weekend, wasting my life away, like I, I had this trip and all of it just came, it became very, I was very hyper aware of everything that I was doing. And I became like, I started panicking that I was wasting my life away and I was wasting my time away. And I couldn't stand another moment when I would waste any time because time is the only currency that you can't get back. You can always make more money. Uh, that's why, that's never really worried me. It's never been a concern. You, I could always make more money. You can't ever make time. Uh, and that, realizing that I'm never gonna get that back and that my youth is fleeting, that made me panic. And I, I just stopped wasting it from that moment on. It was just, it was just like something switched in my head like, this comfort zone is, is the, the biggest trap in the world, you know? You know they used to cure alcoholism with LSD in the 70s? It yeah. would make people hallucinate because, and it wasn't the LSD that would cure the alcoholism. It was that when people would go on LSD, they would literally be able to see what they were doing to themselves. Yeah. Like you just said. And then they would make the change when they would snap out of it. But a lot of people have, like, they will go into that state and not come out of it. They become schizophrenic. So I don't recommend people do that. Fuck so no. I bet there might be some people watching right now, like, oh, maybe I should do no, that. No, 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 no. It's, not a, it's, not, not. it's not a good prescription. But Absolutely that's not. But it's, um, it's, you, it's never going to happen until you get fucking disgusted. Like the first job that I had. I despised it. I was fucking doing telemarketing. Slamming phones in a fluorescent lit cubicle all fucking day, no sunlight, no windows, in basically a concrete barrier on a fucking computer with a headset, just on rotary dial, just fucking slamming calls, slamming calls. And I was so fucking disgusted after like uh, two months of doing this shit 40 hours a week. I sabotaged the job and I got myself fired. And it was the best day of my fucking life because I realized in that moment, the day that I got fired, that I no longer had any excuses and I had to go out and do what I really wanted to do and I had no fallback plan anymore. Mm. Now the, the, the game was on and it was up to me now to actually go and pursue what it is that I wanted to and take ownership for that. Yeah, I recommend, always recommend people to get rid of that safety net as quickly as possible. As quickly as possible. You always say that you need to kill the boy. Like you're not mm -hmm. actually, but you need to like kill that innocence. Mm -hmm. So whatever safety net you have, whatever comfort zone you have, if you don't get rid of that immediately, uh, you're gonna fall into a trap that's much harder to get out. 100%. And I, even, even um, Needles, my cameraman, he was telling me this story the other day about he used to work at Chipotle and like after a long day of making like what, 10, 50 an hour or something like that, just like, like staring at your ceiling, like thinking like, is this, is this life? <laughs> is this my life? And then that something was switching you when you're fully like, is this really like everything my parents gave birth to me so that my existence is working for $10 an hour at Chipotle, like scooping up the burrito bowls for people? And that disgust will, will propel you. Um, and most people, so many people, like I just, I think this is the number one problem that, that men have nowadays. They, they won't ever realize that uh, because they have a safety net. They have something to fall back on. So you can't really hit that point of absolute disgust. You'll never hit, you'll never realize, you'll never be fully humiliated with yourself or fully disgusted with yourself because exactly. you're never going to, you're never going to see yourself at that. And it's, it's actually a beautiful place to be in. It's a beautiful place to be. It's when you really get to understand, um, you get to understand yourself. And, and what you need to, to work on. Yeah, I had that Yeah, too because then the next step becomes very clear. Yeah. Once you get to that point of disgust, like the next, there's no more bullshitting yourself. It's very fucking clear and there's, like, you cross the Rubicon, there's no going back. But you also believe in, uh, this reminded me, you say that men shouldn't fully understand themselves. But I think I started to fully understand myself like once I was completely disgusted. Why do you think that men shouldn't fully understand themselves? Men should not analyze why they're good at what they're good at is the nuance because once you start to really try to reverse engineer why you're doing is working it stops working right it's like the guy who realizes that he's funny starts trying to be more funny mm. and now no one's laughing at the jokes anymore mm -hmm. but there's guys that are just naturally hilarious and they never stop to to wonder or worry about why they have that kind of superpower mm -hmm. It's like the more you try to understand why you're good at what, you're, what you do, the more you fuck it up. Mm -hmm. It's better to just go in there and go unconscious and just perform at the highest level. 
It's just totally unconscious, second nature to you. So you men have to be in a constant state of, of high performance. Exactly. Dude, 100%. Taking on more responsibility because you can't let people down. The stakes get higher. And ironically, this cures a lot of mental illness in society. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that are self-destructive and self-sabotage, the reason they do that is because they don't have kids. They don't have a family. They don't have anything to, they don't Nobody's have any, relying on them. No one's relying on them. So then, so then why does that guy like you, you know, obviously this is an outlier. Why does that guy who is in crippling debt in Turkey, I see this video, like he couldn't feed his family anymore. He ends up jumping off um, a bridge in a mall. Like even though he has to provide for his family, how does a man get to that state? Because nature doesn't guarantee it. That's the whole trick about this whole thing is that suffering gives you the best chance. It gives you the best odds to break free from your situation. But some yeah. some people never mentally recover, unfortunately, right? Not everyone's gonna be a winner. Not everyone's gonna be a fucking Fortune 500 CEO. Not everyone's gonna be the best streamer in the world. It's not gonna happen for, for 99%. But the point is, as a man, is you have to at least make the attempt to really, because every goal as a man starts as a fucking delusion, starts as a lie, right? You you wanted to be a streamer when you were a kid. Yeah, they call you crazy. They call you fucking nuts. They, they, everyone everyone called me insane, and then you start to succeed, and then they call you a genius, and then they applaud you. Exactly. After you get the results. But it started as a complete lie. It wasn't even real, and you made it real. You made it real, which is what a man's job is. The more a man can make the visions in his head become a reality, the higher you go. That's literally the game of life. You got to make all your fantasies actually come true. And the guys that sit there and just fantasize all day and never try to actually bring it to real life, those are the guys who suffer the most and never break out of it. And it's ironic because when women get to live like that, that's when they're at their happiest. They're at when their they best. Ha they have their delusions and they never have to see them because they get to live internally and their delusions make them happy. Oh, like crystals are making me, exactly. my astrology stuff, uh, I'm gonna start, like they are happiest when they get to be in a little bit, of, when they get to live in La La Land completely. When men live in La La Land and there's no results, that's when they, they crumble. Totally fucking crumble. Because that's how everybody me measures you as a man, ultimately. Like, did you make your fantasies real? Mm. Then no one can say a word to you, right? Like, if you, if you can make it happen, there's, you silence the critics. Do you ever get lazy? Dude, all the time. What, what is a- I'm like a lion, bro. I'm pretty much just just chilling, chilling, chilling. I get inspiration, I get a vision, and I act immediately and implement it. That's my whole life. Like bull rushes. I get everything done in just like quick little bursts of like bull rushes, and then I go rest again. Everything in my life is like a sprint. Knock it out, gotta send an email, boom. I'll put my best foot forward, 15 minutes, done. Never to be returned to again. You're not a marathon 5K runner. Not at all. Why? Not at all. It's just not in my nature. I'm a fast twitch motherfucker. I'm an explosive thinker. Everything I do is explosive. The way I train, the way I think, my financial strategy. They, my whole life is congruent because the way I gamble is the way I lift weights. The way I lift weights is the way I gamble. The way I gamble, the way I lift weights is the way I think. It's all connected. Everything I do is maximum capacity, fast twitch. Impulsive ADHD like. 100%. 100%. And so like for me, being a bodybuilder and going in the gym and training my muscles slow and fucking doing the slow contra contractions would actually slow me down mentally because it's incongruent with my lifestyle. Right. So you're not doing the 15 rep like slow Never. curl thing. Just because my thinking, my career, my profession requires me to be constantly fucking turning my gears. I constantly have to troubleshoot, find answers to, to problems. And so the way I train, it's all, a, I have a very holistic approach. They all complement each other. You know what I mean? Like if you're a slow moving motherfucker, then it makes sense that your whole life should be like that. But if it's fast, everything should be fast because everything reinforces the, the machine. Like that's, the, that's been the biggest benefit of weightlifting for me. It's not about the, the training. It's about the reinforcement of that explosive lifestyle. Being explosive is a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, I get forceful thoughts and I immediately fucking implement them and take action. I don't sit on my desires. Like I gratify my whims. What do you do when you get a negative thought? Are you like that? Yeah, I am. Like if you want I'm something, no matter how petty, you're going to go get it. 
that's that's how I've always lived. Yeah, me too. I don't like. Um, I need to have the absolute best. That's what, and now. And right now, yeah. yeah. I want results right now. I don't like delayed. I want to see it happen right now, because it is possible. Like it, other people are getting it, so like why why can't I get it? Dude, it's complete. That's what's so crazy. Like twenty four hours is an eternity. <laughs> you can fall in love. I I truly believe this you can fall in absolute deep love with someone in less than 24 hours you can have a whole relationship you can have a whole relationship in under a day if the fucking cocktails are right and everything's mixing the correct way that can happen Mm. empires get built in a day people get rich in a day it happens every fucking day Mm. the most incredible fucking barriers and oceans move for people on a daily basis so people don't view time correctly they think 24 hours is a very short period of time when in reality, it's an entire life. You can live a whole life in one day. So what do you think about delayed gratification? Not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> At all. Doesn't work for me. But certainly you have to have some sort of long-term... Yeah, it's built into the game, but like I'm not accepting of it is what I'm trying to say. Okay. People often say that like it, the way to have a positive mindset is to, to beat depression. And I think, I, don't, I haven't seen you talk about that, but I think you're similar to me where I think I am depressed the way a lot of people are depressed, but I just don't act on it or I just don't think about it. Exactly. Like I, I, think, I, I think a lot of people who have a similar frame of the world, like they come from um, like a place of misery, mm-hmm. but I just don't choose to think about it. I, I push it away. And Dude, I just, 100% I just act. repressing it. Yeah. I'm in the same state. A I, constant state of repressing misery. 100%. I don't know a single, honestly, bro, I don't know a single person in America who's not depressed. Truly, deep down. Like there's some level of it. There's just some level of it. What does depression mean to you? Fuck, man, it's it's just the awareness that you constantly have to move. It's the awareness that you you, you can never rest on your laurels Mm -hmm. or everything collapses. You know what I mean? That creates like a sort of like low level anxiety, depression in people. Yeah. Like as a man, right? You can go to the gym for 20 years and lay off the gas pedal and look like a piece of in, in one year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you'll just lose everything if you take your foot off the gas pedal. Entropy. Like you got to fight off fucking decay as a man constantly. And like you'll lose your mental faculties too if you stop challenging yourself. I think that's the biggest thing too, is like as a man, you always have to have, be biting something off more than you can chew and then figuring it out. Like taking on the most towering challenges and tackling challenges that are way over your head and then trying to figure it out. And I've always been like that. And that's how I've learned. It goes back to your question about my tweet about how I never consciously learned a skill. The way I got good at anything was just going in to something that was way over my head that I had no concept of even how to do it and then injecting myself and immersing myself in it and then figuring it the fuck out. And you'll get pretty good at shit if you do that enough times. Yeah, it's like the the most amount of studying I ever got done was when I pushed it off to the last second and I just had to perform because the exam's the next day. And then it's amazing how you just start retaining everything, Mm -hmm. right? You got like two hour deadline, all of a sudden- I'm gonna get done. All of a sudden you're Rain Man. You're just, everything you read is just getting fucking hard written into the dome. But how different do you think men are? Do you think all men are are pretty much, I hold the belief that pretty much all men are the same. We all have the same imperatives. We all have the desire to conquer, to be great, to be respected. Do you think that anybody is really that much different? Not at all. I 100% agree with you. I think we're all literally built the exact fucking same. When it's all said and done, God deals very fair hands. That's just how it is. The hands that you get dealt are are pretty fucking fair. Everyone has a glaring Achilles heel weakness, right? Mike Tyson was the greatest power puncher in the world, but look at his voice, right? But but nobody talks about it because of how Because of how good he was. So you talk, talk about overshadowing your weaknesses, which was my point earlier, right? You become so good at something, people will completely forego your weaknesses, mm-hmm. you know? But if he wasn't the best power puncher in the world, that motherfucker would have been bullied and, and looked down on and derided the rest of his life. He would have been made fun of, right? He would have been a caricature of himself. Mm-hmm. So my point is, it doesn't matter how naturally blessed or gifted or talented a man is, there's always 
a fucking glaring weakness. Everyone has the, the fucking Achilles heel. And we all know what that is. We all know what our genuine fucking vices and weaknesses are, that we, the demons that we just can't beat within us. We all have them. But you have to perform better than... You have to perform better than, than... You have to counteract it with such force and overwhelmingness that it can't defeat you. And that's where the pressure of being a high performer... That's why that's the only game worth playing. Like, the only thing that you should be doing as a man is trying to be great. Because in that process, it doesn't even matter if you don't hit the goal. If you come up with the loftiest, craziest goal and you actually commit to the journey with full force and you fail, it doesn't matter. It's about who you became in the process of chasing that goal. That's at the end of the day, it's about who you become on the other side, what kind of man you became. And so that's why it's a worthy endeavor to, you know, they say shoot for the stars and who cares if you miss, you're on top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. That's true. Last time we spoke, I I told you how you're like, you kind of embody that like rogue American, yeah. like you're like the guy in the American spirit cigarette box. Like, that's <laughs> kind of what I think when I think about Boot DeForce. Well, what do you think, and you've said it a couple of times uh, just now, you're saying that everybody in America, you don't know anybody in America that's not depressed. Um, yeah, I know you spent some time and you, you've, you're pretty well traveled, right? Mm-hmm. What is the difference between that American mentality and why do we have more, more of a need? To, we, we Americans have more, way more highs and lows than people in other places, I think. I think people in Europe, like an Italian would be more comfortable with the hand-rolled cigarettes and a couple glasses of wine and a cannoli. They, they can turn off uh, that constant need to perform more. Like in Spain, for example, they have lunch from three to 7 p.m. It's insane. They're just eating pasta, drinking wine for four hours. What is the difference between that American spirit and the European spirit? It all has to do with competition and innovation. The competition here is so steep as a man, right? Like, let's take Miami, for example. In Miami, if you want to make it in Miami, you probably have to be fit, have your money in check. You got to tick a lot of fucking boxes in order to probably lock down the baddest girl in Miami, Yeah. right? Yeah. You can't be slacking in any department. And America offers the opportunity to compete at the highest levels in any game that you want to play. It's a very gamified society. Whereas the other societies, the European societies, they're a little more primitive. They're a little more primal. You know what I'm saying? Capitalism isn't really like the driving force in those countries. They're about the siesta life. They want to sit around. They're more in touch with their nature and the fucking, the Dionysian, you know, the god of wine. They just want to fucking fuck and drink wine and make art and listen to music and shit like that. Um, But if you're a gamer... And you have that that alligator blood where you wake up in the morning and you just absolutely have to get after it. This is the best place to be. Because if you want to perform at the highest levels, you're going to find a market here for that. Any game that you want to play in America, you can either create the game, invent the game, or compete in the game. So all bases are covered. There's nothing in your wildest imagination that you cannot produce here. You can make it happen. It's possible. It ain't possible in those other places because no one has the drive, the baseline. There's like an invisible cultural kind of spell, kind of malaise, like a fog almost that kind of hovers over the town where no one really is trying to be worth hundreds of millions in Italy. (laughs) Like, you know what I'm saying? As a general consensus Mm -hmm. here, everybody wants the bag. Everybody wants the bag. So it raises, it kind of raises the standards, which like I said, winners are always having fun. That should be fun. Knowing that you have that opportunity every day, you should wake up and never be truly fucking destabilized or immobilized. You think you're ever going to reach that point? Sometimes I think about that. I'm not ever satisfied. I've always want more. Like every accomplishment I had was fun for like a couple, I mean, was like satisfying for a bit and then it was always on to the next thing. Always. I speak to my dad about this and he see like, that sort of lifestyle is, is exhausting to him, thinking that it's a, it's a constant pursuit and grind. Like some people just want to like open up a book and you know look at the backyard, mow the lawn. Do you think that you're gonna ever be able to turn off that hunger for the game? No, no, and I've accepted it. I'm at peace with it. It brings me peace and alleviation to know that that's never gonna go away. The work is never done. 
But I have kind of like a Taoist kind of like Eastern philosophy with this where I do realize that you have to, you have to go get, you have to get rich just to prove to yourself that it never mattered. Yeah. You got to go get the fucking best girl on the planet to realize that it's just, you have to, you have to achieve every goal on your list just to prove to yourself that it's worthless in the end. Mm -hmm. And that's the best part about life is that's actually what happens. Like you get, you hit that milestone and you're like, eh, it's whatever. So what do you think the point is? Of life? Yeah. To push yourself as far as you can possibly go than what you were supposed to be on paper. Like what your genetic hard cap was supposed to be, what everybody said you were supposed to cap out at, your job, I believe, is to exceed that. It's, it's very simple. I think life is simple. I think as a man, we're born to go as far and try to climb as high as you can possibly go. See how far you can take it. But the Taoist principle, like the, a lot of that Eastern philosophy is a sort of acceptance of everything. They, they meditate, they get Which a Which I don't fuck with at all, by okay. the way. Yeah, I don't fuck with that stuff at all. Because you're taking a class of people that are already invisible and already doing nothing and you're telling them to sit there in a room and meditate. Like true meditation is when you're under actual fire. You have actual horrific stress on your shoulders and you can be in a Zen place that's like an active state of meditation. Like my best meditations are when I have the most pressure on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. That's when I'm the most calm. Anybody can be calm in a candle lit room, right? With feng shui, anyone can do that. How many motherfuckers can truly keep that calm state of mind and that grace under fire when the, when world's, crumbling when the world's crumbling on you? That's true meditation to me. So what, what parts of that, the Eastern philosophy do you resonate with? Cause that, that's what I've always associated, like the Buddha. Just the that. whole kind of idea, that, and I've kind of, I've kind of twisted this in my own fashion. But the whole idea that the terrain is flat, like people think it's the mountain to, to success is so fucking arduous, and you got to keep climbing, climbing. Everything's relatively pretty fucking flat. Life is relatively easy if you lean into your nature and what you're naturally good at. It, things are pretty effortless. Like this, the process of success, right? Like you're going through it now. You've been doing this shit so long. You going on a stream for a couple hours is just a walk in the park. It's as simple as you walking to your car. It's just totally fucking ingrained. You don't have to ever fucking think about it. You got the gift. You can flick on a camera and you can talk shit for fucking five hours if you have to. Yeah. And I always forget how anxiety inducing that is for most people because like this, this whole day, like stream snipers coming up or like um, the girls that I had on stream, it's like, you put a camera on them and you, they're, they're shaking. shaking. Like, like these four Mexican kids came up and they were just, that this, this whole thing was completely horrifying. You often forget how um, it becomes second nature when you, you lean into what you're good at for so long. Exactly. It's effortless now for you. Yeah. Yeah, this workout, this powerlifting workout is going to be difficult. It's going to be a, a, it's gonna a, be a new challenge. test. It's going to be a challenge. How long did it take to, to get good at it? I'd say probably like six months. That's it? Yeah, but I was going, I was doing two a days. So like I would go in there, I would, I was, I was, I already had a pretty strong base. I was a fighter in Italy. Yeah, uh, you had, smokers, right? I had 12 uh, Muay Thai smokers and I was doing Muay Thai up there for a while and playing high stakes poker. And when I came back to the States, I actually broke my hand in my last fight and I had a compound fracture. My bone was sticking out of my wrist. Oh, fuck. And I had to go to the hospital and they said, you need pins and screws in your hand or your hand will never be the same. And I said, fuck you. And I walked out and I was like, I'm gonna go on the craziest journey to figure this out on my own because I think there's a better way to do it. And I got into strength training and by learning strength training, I happened to come across physical therapy and I figured out that if you get a strong knowledge of strength training combined with physical therapy, you can almost treat any injury yourself. But the bottom line is I ended up working with this guy who was like, bro, if you fucking do these specific exercises that I'm gonna show you how to do, obviously I was in a cast for like nine months, but my rehab protocol, bro, I fixed my hand by myself and it is a perfectly brand new hand. I have zero fucking limitations. And had I listened to the doctor, I would, I'd have fucking metal plates in my wrist. And so I took that same ethos in strength training and I ran with it and I was training twice a day because I was so addicted to the, to the benefits that I was getting from it. My hand was just getting better and better. And even gripping the bar, gripping the bar was just getting better. And that's sort of the other thing that I learned about movement and how movement is truly the panacea for life. Like if you go through a heartbreak as a man, if you keep moving, 
it doesn't hurt as bad. When you have a severe injury and you and you move with it and you figure out a way to, to work around it, but you still are trying to find ways to be active, you feel better, you, you heal quicker. Life is very much like that. And so by doing these, these things, even though it was brutal pain, I was healing at like a 50% faster rate than I was supposed to because I just kept fucking exercising. I was training my body. You have to use your hand. You have to fucking use your hand again. So your body adapts the same way 100%. your mind adapts to the situation. It's the same thing that I talked about with the metaphor of the revenant. That guy didn't have medical attention. His legs were broken. But by moving and forcing himself, even though he could only move one one moment at a time, even sometimes a centimeter at a time, he was teaching his body that it has to recover. You have no choice. You're gonna die if you don't fucking force your body to respond to the pressure that it's under. And it's no different with us. And so I learned that firsthand, no pun intended. And uh, bro, it's a brand new hand. And so I just got addicted to the process and it never gets old getting stronger. People are like, isn't it boring? You've been training for 20 years. I'm like, bro, getting stronger never gets old. It's addicting. It's addicting. Cause you're seeing progress every time you go. And uh, I had a very unusual, unorthodox approach to it. I, I went in there with the mentality that if I train every day to my maximum capacity, I'm gonna get stronger. And people were like, you mean to tell me you don't have a workout plan? You don't write down your reps? You don't, you don't follow a structure? And I was yeah. like, no. I go in there and I put heavy things over my head every day you're gonna get strong as fuck. It's that simple. And that's what I did. And in six months, I surpassed everybody in my gym who'd been training for like four years. Because I just had that ruthless mentality that I was gonna go in there and I was competitive. I wanted to be better than everybody.